My name is Warrior Boswell, I'm a designer. You at my offices in downtown Los Angeles. I've been commissioned by 1800 Tequila to create a refined ensemble from raw pieces that I'm sourcing from all over the city. It's for a red carpet event. There's gonna be lights, a bunch of people. It's very hot. And the heat will be omnipresent. So what's important is that what's created is breathable. I wish I could tell you who it's for. He's a professional basketball player and a rising star. I am under a very strict timeline. I have two and a half weeks to make it come together. I come from a family that's rich in love, not necessarily finance. It was like, you're out of college, you're an adult, you gotta figure it out. So with the help of family and friends, pretty much just called out to the universe and was like, I wanna make clothes. I want it to completely sustain my lifestyle and its trajectory. Here we are. I've been blessed to have a really diverse spectrum of clientele. LeBron James, Ellen DeGeneres. Traditionally, at these types of events, people are wearing suits. We're gonna do something different, something that is one applicable to his personality and that's apropos for the weather. Gotta make a left right here. Go down, right at 18th Street, make a left. Oh, we're on our way to one of my uh, resources. Jack has a bunch of military surplus from all different decades, all different countries. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for some fabric that you had at the Rose Bowl. The Belgian Congo. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're looking for? As much as you can. Oh, wow. No, we have enough. That's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> These are the Belgian Congo camo. Perfect. The thing that I found so unique about the camouflage is that it's different from like the camouflage you see here in the US. You could put it in a frame and it could be a piece of art. This pattern is basically from the 50s. Definitely history. <laughs> Plenty of it. Incredible. These are, they're battle fatigues. So they're very thick. Uh, I'm going to have to silicone wash them first and hopefully that will loosen them up. I put a silicone wash on it, and that didn't give it the softness that I need. If that doesn't work, we got to do a stone wash. And then from there, it's starting to come around finally and be the type of flowy material that I need it to be. So pretty much what I want you to be is a sexy one. Okay. I mean, I think that comes natural for you, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the one. It's great. It really looks good. I think Los Angeles is having its moment. There's so many creative things here and so many creative people. You can find inspiration anywhere, but for me, it is, it's the inspiration. I haven't found the fabric that I'm going to use for the shirt, the blackout curtain that has, you know, just an amazing drape. Yeah, the the color contrast, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was all about that. I see the world from an artist's point of view. I'm always looking for the beauty in something. And what's beautiful about the cupro is that it feels like a silky material because the way it's processed, it comes from the outer lining of the seed of cotton, gives it a very fine hand. And in giving it a fine hand, it has a very fantastic drape. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I really, really appreciate it. Initially with the shirt, it was going to be long sleeve but long sleeves really don't make sense because it'll be between 95 to 105 degrees on the red carpet. So it went from a long sleeve to a short sleeve and ultimately rested on no sleeves. I now hand this off to my team. We cut it and construct it. For it to crystallize that this is specifically made for you, I want the client to feel like somebody receiving a billion dollar check. That's empowered. I'm having a bit of a creative situation that I'm dealing with here. I only have one week left now. I have one more piece to make, which is the coat. I think this may be the hardest fabric for me to find. Most people who do what I do, they have great archives. When I go to flea markets, if I see anything that like I can gain motivation from, I'll pick it up and it usually ends up in one of these boxes of stuff. This Parisian raincoat, double-breasted, heat sealed. And what happens is whenever projects such as this come along, 
I can then say, I think I have something that I may be actually able to use for an outfit. I found this at a thrift shop. It, it had these numbers on it, like, you know, when a parachute inflates, it has the numbers one, two, three, four, five, all the way around it. And it said, you know, NASA space program on it. I was just like, this is at a secondhand shop? Where do parachutes go to die? Like, I never thought about that. It has an amazing breathability because it's a parachute, so naturally it has to breathe. So this is perfect. The robe is one thing. Shawl lapel, all black, has the belt. So what I'm gonna have to do to this is I'm gonna have to take it apart. And after I take it apart, I'm gonna dye each one of these panels. It is my hope that this thing doesn't disintegrate, that it stays together, and that it just takes the color. The people who designed that parachute, I guarantee you had no idea that some 60 years later, it would be used on a red carpet. In finding materials, there's no place that I won't look because you never know when you're gonna find something at a junkyard if need be, at a secondhand store. It's great to find beauty in unexpected places. Those little things add a world of value to every single piece. To take something that is raw and then refine it into something that somebody would wear, there's no better feeling.